What's up Chaos Shinobi here? This is what if neglected Naruto hates his family. Summary, Naruto is ignored and neglected living in the shadows of his sister. Naruto grows up hateful and bitter towards his family one day hoping to get revenge for the years of neglect. Chapter 10 A day off was given to Team 10 as a reward because all three managed to advance to the third round of the Chounin exams. Naruto did not went go home that night. He was actually afraid of what his father would do to him when he got home. Naruto could still remember the cold dark glare his father gave him after they were dismissed. Him being paired with Jin for the final exam was both the best and worst thing that could happen. Naruto could humiliate the genius in front of Konoha but if he won. The memory of Minato landing blow after blow on Naruto's immobile body came to mind. But boy was he in for a surprise when Danzo approached him the next day. Keep quiet and follow me. Was all the old warhawk said before disappearing. Naruto had already had this happen quite too many times and learned how to follow his sensei. They reached the east wall and stopped. A Chunin was standing guard and when he saw Danzo, the Chunin bowed. Danzo turned to Naruto who was behind him. I shall give you a privilege that I have never given anyone. You will be the first non-root affiliated shinobi to enter the root on Buu HQ. Before Naruto could reply, Danzo turned to the Chunin and nodded. The root nin proceeded to tap a few portions of the massive wall before forming a hand sign. A quiet rumble and a part of the wall sank into the floor, revealing a doorway and a set of stairs that led downwards. Danzo quickly descended down the stairs and Naruto followed him tightly, the doorway closed up immediately. The stairway was dark and damp with only a few torches along the walls giving limited illumination. After walking for what felt like 10 minutes, a bright light was seen at the end. They walked into the light and revealed a large dojo with dozens of shinobi both young and old training. Welcome to Root Headquarters, Naruto. The blonde surveyed the scene with slight interest. I told you Danzo, I will not join Root and that is final, said Root Commander chuckled. But Naruto, I am not asking you to join us. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. No. I am asking you to lead us. A deafening silence. The training Root Ninja stopped what they were doing and watched their leader. What? Naruto loudly exclaimed. Even the cold. Apathetic Namikaze could not help but be shocked. Bet that threw you guys off. Danza smiled yes. I as the current commander of the Anbu unit root proclaim you, Namikaze Naruto is the new leader of root. The blonde stared at Danzo incredulously b but I I can't. I I. Wait. This is a trick isn't it? I don't know what you are planning but, Danzo frowned. Let's face it Naruto. I am getting old. You know I am 81 this year. I have never appointed a successor nor have I thought about one. I always thought I would be able to reign over Root until I have acquired the position of Hokage but there is just not enough time. And you, Namikaze Naruto, is by all means my true successor. The Namikaze looked down the floor, thinking about what his sensei just said. Sure I have thought Shikamaru and Sai as well, but you are my true apprentice. I have taught you everything I know, Danzo continued. Your dream is to be the strongest shinobi in the world right? With the help of Root, you can achieve that dream. Lead Root and conquer Konoha. Rid this village of its tyrannic ruler, Namikaze Minato. Danzo reached into his robe and fished out a golden emblem, diamond in shape that had the Anbu symbol on it. This is the root emblem. It signifies the holder as the root commander. Take it, Naruto. The blonde stared at the golden emblem before reaching out and received it from Danzo. At once, all the Anbu in training appeared before Naruto and knelt on one knee. All hail Naruto-sama. Naruto stared at the root nins I understand. He tightened his grip on the emblem. I shall become Hokage and become the strongest shinobi the world will ever see. That. That is a promise. Danzo nodded in acknowledgement now let's move on to your training for the next month. The, her dot ho dots, b dot r dot o dot d dot her. Meanwhile at the Namikaze mansion, with Jin. Well, go pack your bag son, me and Jiraiya sensei will be taking you away for some intense training for the next month, Minato said excitedly. Jin could only groan in annoyance. Ah. Come on dad, I don't want to train. I am going to the third exam aren't I? Why do I need more training? The Ondame only smiled there's nothing wrong in training more than what's needed, but if you don't want to, we don't have to train all the time. Jin grinned in return, okay dad. Minato grinned back and ruffled Jin's hair. That's my boy. Jiraiya sensei and I will be teaching you how to summon the toads for battle, and also more importantly, the usage of that lil furballs chakra. Which is correct. Me and Jiraiya or Jiraiya and me? At that moment, the infamous Gama Sanin flew in through the window. You ready kid? He asked Jin. The Jinshuriki took a moment to absorb the question definitely, Uro Senin. I know, you guys don't like author's notes in the middle of the story, I just don't want to forget putting in the AN at the bottom when I'm finished. 
Anyways, I think that calling Jiraiya Uro Senin is a little obnoxious and I kinda gag whenever I see Naruto disrespect one of my favorite characters like that. Jiraiya frowned at that. Don't call me that, brat. Be more respectful. Like your dad, Minato laughed at the two's interaction. He picked it up from Kushina, you know? The frog hermit pouted like mother like son, huh? Speaking of annoying brats, where's Kushina? Jiraiya asked. Oh she's in the kitchen making lunch. Kushina was really happy when she saw Jin come back unharmed. The Ondame answered. Jin interrupted their conversation. Of course I would be unharmed after following dad's map. The Jinchuriki puffed up his chest, giving a self-satisfied smirk. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. Map? Minato grinned, yep, I gave my son the map of training ground 44 and on it, I marked the safest and also the fastest route to the tower. It would have only taken a day, but I don't know how Jin reached the tower in three days. The other teams couldn't have confronted his team, because of all the beware of extremely violent beasts warning signs I put along the route. Jiraiya frowned. Minato how could you have done that? I thought that Sarutobi sensei always emphasized on fairness and equality. How could you help your son cheat? The blonde shrugged. A ninja is supposed to use every tool at his disposal, a map is merely a tool for Jin to succeed. The white-haired hermit sighed. Minato, there isn't a shortcut for everything. The Chunin exams is not only a chance for Jenins to become Chunin. It is also a lesson. A big lesson for both the failures and those who succeeded. How would Jin learn anything if you help him to cheat? Jin looked at Jiraiya incredulously. What's the big deal, Uro Senin? I advanced to the third exam, it's all that matters. Jiraiya let out a deep breath of disappointment. It's not the same, Jin. Both of you just don't understand. Meet me at the northern gate, we will travel from there to Jin's training spot. With that said, Jiraiya went out the window, disappearing. Minato and Jin stared at the open window both wondering what was wrong with their favorite white-haired pervert today. The, her dot o dots, b dot r dot o dot d dot her. Two weeks into training, Kushio Snojutsu, Jin shouted. A tiny green-colored toad, a quarter the size of his palm appeared. Damn it! I am already putting lots of my chakra in the jutsu, but still, I can't summon any toad bigger than this tiny little thing. Said Toad merely narrowed its eyes and hit Jin's face with its unnaturally long tongue. Jiraiya stood by the side, shaking his head in exasperation. Minato had already left, claiming he was going to bring back notes for Jin from the mansion. Even a fool could tell the Yondaime was quickly becoming more and more frustrated at Jin's complete incompetence. For the last time, you have to reach within yourself and summon as much chakra as you can, Jiraiya said. Jin only grabbed his head in confusion that's what I have been trying to do for the last two weeks. The toad sage pinched the bridge of his nose. Was this kid really Minato's child? He could swear the blonde was much more talented and easier to teach. The, her dot o dots, b dot r dot o dot d dot her, clang. The sound of metal hitting metal resonated throughout the wood covered walls. A root jown and wielding Aotachi was locked in combat with a smaller opponent. With a flash of silver, the root Jounin was knocked away but landed on his feet safely. Naruto was currently attempting to fend off five Jounins at the same time only using a Tsurugi. Think Orochimaru's Kusanagi but the hilt is a traditional katana hilt, sometimes they would attack one by one, sometimes they would attack all together. Leaving Naruto hard pressed to block all their attacks. The five Jounin nodded simultaneously before jumping towards him, each holding a sharp weapon. Two katanas, Tainto, Odachi, and Itachi. The training was supposed to let him learn how to deal with multiple pronged attacks, how to deal with different weapons, and how to kill a comrade without remorse. Naruto let loose a breath and with a quick surge of chakra, he flew into their midst. Five quick strikes and blood splattered the walls. Clap, clap, clap. Naruto looked towards the source of the clapping. Danzo stood by the side admiring Naruto's handiwork. Good. Very good. The blonde stabbed the Tsurugi into the floor. The blood dripping from the cold hard metal blade to the wooden floors. This is wrong. I previously had no object killing your men. But I have been killing five of them every day. Altogether, I have already killed 70 root Jounin. Do you really have the means to replace them? Naruto asked. Donzo looked at the blonde do not worry about pawns. They are merely sacrificial pieces. Naruto narrowed his eyes you know, you are starting to sound like a certain Sanin. The old warhawk raised an eyebrow please do not compare me to Orochimaru. He derives pleasure from killing and murder of innocents, I only do what I do out of necessity. Naruto frowned. And killing your subordinates is necessary? To help with your growth, yes. It is a necessary sacrifice. Donzo replied monotonously. The blonde-eyed his sensei then turned away with a dch. The, her dot o dots, 
B.R.O.D.Her. Third week into training, Jin stood in the horse stance, his face was a look of concentration before he formed several hand seals. Pig, dog, rooster, monkey, sheep. Kushios no jutsu. A plume of smoke appeared, a loud croak. The smoke dispersed to reveal an extremely small toad with its tail still behind. How can this be? Jin yelled at the top of his lungs. Jiraiya who was leaning against a tree, asleep, opened one eye lazily. No matter how untalented Jin was, that had to be a limit. Minato clapped great job, son. Just a bit more, you are so close. He complimented, donning a rather fake smile before moving towards Jiraiya. Sensei, is this normal? The white-haired hermit sighed what do you mean? The jutsu warrior son? The blonde squirmed a little both. Could the QB be interfering with his summoning, or could the jutsu be malfunctioning? Jiraiya sighed again that's not possible. In fact, QB should be helping him with summoning. The additional chakra gained from the fox should be a boost. The Ondai milked down before brightening up. Sensei, do you think it's time we train Jin to use that? Jiraiya looked interested. Yes. Maybe it is time. The, her dot ho dots, b dot r dot o dot d dot her, squelch. Naruto stabbed his Tsurugi even further in his last opponent's gut. This one was quite challenging, he must have been a Kenjutsu specialist. B dragged the sword downwards narrowly missing the crotch by a few inches before he dragged out the blade forcefully, his opponent's blood and gore splattering the floor and Naruto's body. The body fell down with a thud. Naruto raised his blood-covered hand and brought it near his mouth. He always wondered what the blood of others would taste like. But before he could sate his curiosity, a root messenger appeared by the door. Naruto-sama, Donzo-sama wishes to see you. Naruto looked at his blood-covered clothes understood, tell him I will be there in five minutes. I have to change into fresher clothing. The messenger bowed high. And left. Five minutes later, Naruto was donning a black colored standard shinobi uniform. That was he always wore since arriving in Roots HQ. He opened the door to Donzo's room without waiting for permission and sat down on the tatami mat. The root commander was already long used to it. Donzo stared straight at the seated Naruto. You have completed your kenjutsu training. For the rest of the week you can either rest or train in whatever you want. But first, I have a reward for you, for killing a 104 root jounins thus far. Naruto looked surprised. 104? What about the? The warhawk frowned the only one you did not kill, you maimed. The blonde could remember him. Wore a black mask with a kanji for fire on the forehead. He was quite skilled in what Naruto liked to call, fancy footwork. The blonde severed his spine after getting bored of the root jounin prancing around him. Anyways, here is the reward from behind Donzo pulled out a rather large scroll. Naruto received it with both hands and delicately opened it up. His eyes widened. D this is. The, her dot ho dots, b dot r dot o dot d dot her. Jin stood up, confused at what he was looking at. He was apparently in a sewer of some sort. The Jinchuriki rubbed his head in confusion, wondering just why in the world Urasenin pushed him off a cliff. The last thing he could remember was falling through the ravine, grumbling about how to get back at Jiraiya. He suddenly stopped and turned his head towards the end of the corridor which had a strange red glow, pulsing. As if seducing him to move towards it. Slowly, Jin walked towards the red light at the end of the corridor, was an immense room, and on the other side of the room, was a gigantic cage. Jin looked at the cage in curiosity, wondering whether Konoha kept a gigantic pet in its sewers. Walking forward, he was suddenly flung back by an enormous amount of a mixture of killing intent and demonic chakra. From the darkness of the cage, two eyes appeared. Grotesque red eyes with a slitted pupils. A large mouth opened. You. Dare disturb my slumber. With a roar so fierce, Jin almost peed his pants. Stuttering in fear, Jin managed to ask a barely understandable WW who or why yo you. The red eyes brightened, as if in amusement. I am the nine tailed by Zhu, Kyubi no Kitsune. Tremble before my presence, mortal, for I am the ruler of Makai, Emperor of Hell. Of course the fox was lying. The ruler of Makai was an ancient demon, Beelzebub, one of the original archangels who rebelled with Satan. And the Emperor of Hell or also known as the Lord of the Afterlife was this Hinegami himself. But humans did not know that. Jin was near tears, as the demonic visage of Kyuubi was now fully in view. Slick red fur covered its body and nine massive tails swung back and forth behind the demon. It wasn't known very much, but Kyuubi is actually a very good judge of character. One look, and it could see all the good and bad traits of the person. QB carefully analyzed its vessel. Greed. Sloth. Pride. Anger. Envy. What a sinful human. Containing five of the seven sins. Somehow, Jin regained his lost confidence. 
his somewhat slow brain put things together and finally figured out the nine-tailed demon in front of him was the QB sealed within him. And for some stupid reason, because Jin thought the fox was his prisoner, he could order it around. He hey! Stupid fox! Since you are living inside of me, why not pay me some rent from now on? Jin declared with a smirk, thinking he got the fox. Red eyes widened in anger while QB's massive body began trembling in wrath. Various thoughts of death and destruction flew through his mind. The thought of ripping this insolent human limb from limb could barely sate its bloodlust. Seeing the trembling QB, Jin's smirk grew even more as his face could be the very definition of arrogance and conceit. How dare you! How dare you! Ra, QB roared in its fury. The water shook in slight waves, and the walls around them started shaking. A claw flew towards the cage's opening and it almost reached Jin's head before stopping. Damn this seal! Mark my words, human. You shall regret your words. I will tear you apart. I will chew you into bits. You want chakra? You will have more than your fragile human body can take. A wave of dark red flew through the cage slamming itself into Jin's body. He was forcefully ejected from his mind. In the real world, red chakra tendrils burst from Jin's seal. As if spinning a cocoon, the tendrils began wrapping itself around Jin's body. Minato and Jiraiya who was watching on the cliff, was starting to worry before a surge of demonic chakra brought their attention to Jin. A deep red chakra surrounded him before a scream of pain erupted from him. They could see his body literally breaking down. Pieces of skin started to burn off, muscles started rupturing. Demonic chakra was actually a double-edged sword, for both demons and humans. Demons could go berserk from overuse of demonic chakra, like Shukaku. And human's body would destroy itself from too much demonic chakra. Exactly what was happening with Jin. The Jinchuriki quickly fell unconscious from the pain. Seeing his son's eyelids fall, Minato yelled his name and using the Harashin tag he had placed on Jin before, he reappeared beside Jin. Grabbing his hand, Minato and Jin reappeared back on the cliff with a yellow flash. The Ondaime gripped Jin's shoulders yelling his name, before pulling back his hands, the demonic chakra burning his palms. Jiraiya was more calm and collected than his student. Observing Jin's condition, he went through all the possible solutions, their drawbacks and results. Selecting one of the many sealing jutsus, he went through some hand seals. This Fuu and Jutsu was one he created with Minato. They figured the possibility Kyubi might forcibly shove Jin full of its chakra, breaking his body. Hence, they worked together and created a Jutsu that would be able to completely seal off Kyubi's influence. Temporarily of course. Akuma Hasudo Bunri no Jutsu. Demon host separation technique, Jiraiya yelled out. A burst of chakra came from his palm before a mirror of Jin seal appeared on it. The seal glowed red and the runes around it fused together and formed a new set of runes. The Gama Sanin slammed his palm onto Jin's gut and the seal on his palm combined with Jin's. The point of the jutsu was to effectively cancel out Jin's seal without releasing the trapped beast. Almost instantly, most of the red chakra surrounding Jin flew back into the seal while the rest dispersed into the air. Jiraiya stood before Jin and Minato. The Jinchuriki was a bloody mess. Because the connection to Kyubi was cut off, it meant his speedy regeneration was disabled temporarily. With his skin still missing, Jin looked like a bloody carcass, messily skinned by a psychopath. Whereas Minato was nursing his burnt palm. Jiraiya could see Minato wincing at his palms, a sign of chakra poisoning. He had to get them to the hospital but first. The white-haired Sanin formed several hand seals and sealed Jin into a timeless sphere. For the Jinchuriki, his time would stop within the sphere. Sighing, Jiraiya heaved the sphere onto his shoulders and got Minato to his feet. Why couldn't anything go right with Jin? The, her dot o dots, b dot r dot o dot d dot her, kushios no jutsu. A massive plume of smoke appeared out of thin air. As the smoke dispersed, black beady eyes stared at the man, no boy, in front below him. The last person to summon him was the Amiga Kur boy, Hanzo, was it? Yes, Hanzo. He summoned him right before he was defeated in battle by the Rinnegan user. The boy immediately went down on one knee. Sanshao Osama. I humbly request your permission to summon the noble Salamander clan in battle. Day of the Chonin exams. Location, arena. It was the day of the final Chonin exam. Too many, it was just a form of entertainment. For some, it was a chance to advance to the next rank. For Shikamaru, well. He didn't really want it to there. For Naruto, the Chonin exams was two things. A chance for promotion and a chance, no. An opportunity to humiliate Namikaze Jin. Five of the seven competitors had already arrived whilst Jin and Naruto was still missing. The five finalists stood in the middle of the arena. Nervous, excited, and a little fear in everyone. Even Gara, The Sam Jinchuriki had seen what the blonde could do. 
Most of him was already bloodthirsty but a small part of Gara was already scared of facing him. The proctor, standing in front of the five of them, noticed two Jenins missing. Those two had better arrive soon or he would be forced to disqualify them. But considering how one of them is the Hokage's son, that wasn't likely. In fact, the Hokage himself wasn't even here yet. The Kazekage who was seated at the cage's stand, narrowed his eyes in frustration. If he himself decided to show up on time, he expected the damn Hokage to do the same. Especially if said Hokage is known as the Yellow Flash, user of the Harishin no Jutsu. And even more especially if said cage lived in the same village. But that was before a large flash of light appeared in the arena. Namikaze Minato, donning the white cage robes holding his famous three-pronged kunai in his right hand, while the other was holding onto the shoulder of his Jinshuriki son, Namikaze Jin. Looking at the proctor, Minato gave an arrogant smirk we aren't late are we? The proctor, Gekko Hayate gave a fake smile before assuring them of their impeccable punctuality with much sarcasm. The Ondaime looked at the competitors and after seeing Naruto not with them, his smirk got even wider. It seems that the last finalist is not here yet. He sighs deeply. With much regret, I must dis but he was interrupted. Who says I'm not here yet, Hokage-sama? A sudden voice coming from the entrance turned everyone's heads. From the shadows of the entrance, Naruto appeared. Many gasps went around the stadium. The blonde was wearing his regular all-black shinobi uniform. Only it was stained with a dark liquid. Naruto bloody and battered walked into the arena. His normally golden blonde hair was now a mixture of crimson and yellow. Naruto was limping into the field while cradling his left arm. Minato narrowed his eyes what happened to you? The Ondaime was obviously angry about something. Naruto smiled it turned out several Konoha Jounins was very opposed to me winning my match today and ambushed me. Harsh whispers went through the crowd. It's okay though, I took care of them for you, Hokage-sama. Naruto grinned before holding up six headbands, all stained in dark red. Weirdly enough, they mentioned your name, Hokage-sama. Something about you telling them to stop me from coming here. But I guess they were just lying, weren't they, Hokage-sama? Naruto finished, emphasizing on the last Hokage-sama. Minato looked at the headbands, quietly seethed. Shut up and get in line with your fellow Jinan. Or do you feel not up to the challenge, since you were injured after all, Naruto chuckled. I wouldn't miss this for anything. The older blonde clenched his fist before using Harashin to reappear at the cage stand. Hayate raised an eyebrow at the exchange well it seems all of you are here, he said, looking at the genins before he faced the crowd. The first match will be Namikaze Jin against Namikaze Naruto. At that, many started questioning themselves and the people beside them, whether they have ever heard of the existence of another Namikaze, moreover the fourth son. The proctor turned back to the finalists Jin, Naruto, stay here. The rest of you go to the waiting area. The five who did not belong moved off towards the waiting area where Hayate had pointed out. Staring each other down, Jin and Naruto mentally prepared themselves. The Jinshuriki decided to start the battle first with taunts and insults. Bullshit like bloody idiot was used repeatedly, making use of Naruto's current bloodstained attire. Using the shows no Jutsu, Mystical Palm, a ranked medical ninjutsu, Naruto was able to get his arm and leg working. At least for the whole duration of the fight. Already, the judges were impressed by the high-level medical ninjutsu that was just used. The proctor turned towards them. Now, I want a clean and fair fight. Although I'm required to say that, we all know as shinobis, honor isn't really our forte. Now, Hajime. Jin jumped back, gaining some distance between the two. Naruto stared straight into his brother's eyes. Jin. I am only going to say this once. I am not here to win. I am here to utterly defeat and humiliate you. Said Jinchuriki narrowed his eyes and gritted his teeth in anger. As if, loser. Trash will be trash, no matter how big they talk. Naruto, ignored him and started the battle with a burst of speed. He immediately reappeared beside Jin giving a kick to his ribs. Jin flew away, landing on the ground with a large cry of pain. The blonde looked his brother and whispered. I will definitely. Definitely. Naruto reached down him and unbuckled a scroll tied to his waist. Unrolling it. Naruto bit his thumb and spread a line of blood on the scroll's storage seal. A plume of smoke appeared. Naruto grabbed the object he just unsealed out of the smoke. And settled into a stance. This is it. This is what he trained past his humanly limits for the past month. Years of tolerated bloodlust and anger. Today he will finally be able to unleash his wrath against the object of his fury. It already took everything he had not to end the little bastard's life right there and then. But no. He will slowly torture him. Jin. Jin will wish he had never been born. As the smoke dispersed, 
In his hands was the Tsurugi Naruto had been practicing with for the month. With a burst of chakra from his feet, Naruto jumped towards Jin, his sword halfway into a slash. Jin barely fished out a kunai from his messy, unorganized tool pouch and was able to block Naruto's swing. Only for a second though. The next second, Naruto had already sliced the kunai in two, but stopped his blade right before it hit Jin's forehead. His brother's eyes widened in fear. No. Not enough. He has to suffer more, Naruto kicked Jin away. Jin, put up more of a fight. Or else I might not be able to stop in time and really accidentally kill you. The Jinchuriki narrowed his eyes in anger. Don't talk big, trash. Take my Rasengan. Summoning two shadow clones, he began to form the spiraling sphere. Naruto was torn between two decisions. Overpower him with a stronger technique, or overpower him with another Rasengan? Deciding on the latter, he resealed the sword and easily formed a Rasengan in his palm within a second, meanwhile Jin and his clones were still trying to form the Rasengan. Naruto deadpanned at his twin. Five seconds later. Yosh. Now, eat this. Rasengan, Jin yelled as his two cage bunshines dispersed and he charged towards Naruto, holding the Rasengan. Naruto did not bother to brace himself for impact. As Jin's attack neared him, the blonde merely put out his palm with the Rasengan and his technique met Jin's. A second was all he needed as Naruto's Rasengan easily ripped through Jin's sphere. Jin stared at Naruto's Rasengan in fear, it was an inch from his face. No. This isn't enough. Dispersing the Rasengan, Naruto kicked Jin away again. Come on. Put up a goddamn fight already. I don't want this to end too quickly. I am going to savor every moment. The blonde yelled across the field. I can't help myself but I have to complain about the working conditions on this website. You guys have no idea how hard it is to write out the battle between Naruto and Jin. It's like pitting a civilian infant against a S-ranked ninja. There's barely anything to write with. Is it my fault for making Jin so pathetically weak? The Jinchuriki picked himself up glaring at his twin. Team, don't get too cocky just because you got in one or two lucky blows. I didn't want to use this so soon, but, Jin reluctantly formed a hand seal. Naruto raised an eyebrow before his entire body glowed and he erupted in pain. Glowing blue lines covered his body in an intricate pattern. Even from the massive pain tolerance Naruto had gained, nothing could be compared to this nerve-wrecking pain. Just pain coursing through his entire body. He couldn't help it. Naruto screamed. He fell down on one knee and screamed in pain. The audience looked at the lesser-known Namikaze in confusion. Did one of the heroes attack reach him? Minato smirked. Not an arrogant smirk. But one of those I just killed my greatest enemy smirk. Jin's face mirrored his father's. Seeing Naruto's pain he started to explain what just happened. That glowing thing on your body? That's a few Uenjutsu dad helped me put on you. It's completely tattooed on your body with invisible ink. I don't really understand it, but from what dad told me, whenever I make this seal right here, Jin proved his point by forming the same hand seal. Naruto's pain intensified. You feel even more pain. Jin finished. By the time his explanation ended, Minato was looking a little nervous. Little did Jin know, the field had a jutsu placed on it. A jutsu where the conversation between the two combatants would be broadcasted throughout the stadium. Half were looking at the Ondaimei, mouth agape while the other half was looking at Jin. Eyes scrunched in disdain. As the crowd started to boot Jin realized he just fucked up big time with a capital F. In that one moment he lost concentration, the few Uenjutsu lost power. Naruto grabbed a hold of that chance and despite the devastating pain in him, he got up, charged forward, lunged forward at his brother. His hand reached out and caught Jin's throat in a vice grip. Still holding his throat, Naruto ran forward, dragging Jin along and bam. He smashed Jin into the arena's wall. Oh, he was beyond pissed. You little fucker, Naruto shouted, angry beyond belief. Jin was desperately clawing at his hand in a futile attempt at making him let go. Jin's hands were released from the seal, and because of the lack of oxygen, he forgot about forming it again. Jin's eyes rolled into the back of his head. And all of a sudden, Naruto felt a pulling sensation. And then. Darkness. The blonde opened his eyes to a strange sight. He was lying in water, staring at pipes across the ceiling. He stood up only to see his brother lying down unconscious a few feet from him. What the hell just happened? Naruto looked around, trying to find an exit but a loud booming voice interrupted his search. Another human? How is this possible? Locating the direction where the voice came from, Naruto ran towards the end of the corridor, and found the source of it. And everything was clear to him. Cage, seal, fox. Naruto looked up at Kyuubi behind the bars. You must be the Kyuubi, said Fox eyes widened in amusement. At least you are smarter than my host. 
Tell me, you look like that accursed mortal who sealed me in here, are you related to him in any way, human? Naruto thought about his choices for a brief moment while Kyuubi observed the human in front of it. Yes. I see it. Confusion. Ambition. Cunning. And dark. Yes very dark, Naruto made up his mind. My name is Namikaze Naruto, son of the accursed human who sealed you into my moronic monkey of a brother. And now, you answer my question. Kyuubi smiled and what is that, human? And understand, my patience is wearing thin. Naruto nodded why did you attack Konoha? QB laughed. You humans amuse me. There isn't a reason for every action in the world, you know? I woke up from my thousand year slumber and they were there and I just wanted some destruction and mayhem. Yeah, I know Madara used QB to attack Konoha. But I ain't giving so much power to the Uchiha in this story. So they can't control the Baijuo. End of story. Now it's my turn to ask you a question right? QB gave a toothy smile, his massive teeth showing. Naruto shrugged seeing no problems in their exchange. Will you tear off this seal? Naruto smirked. And not all humans are as stupid as my brother, you know? QB narrowed its eyes. You dare defy me. Oh shut it, Fox. You may think all humans are brainless monkeys that fear you. But from how I see it, there's nothing to fear from a powerless hairball in a cage. Naruto casually said while turning his back to the beast. With that, Naruto pushed himself out of his brother's mind which is strangely a sewer. Considering his upbringing, one would think his might would resemble a castle, leaving Kyuubi roaring and shouting death threats. He returned to the real world, finding his hand still on his brother's throat. Only a short moment passed in the real world. That was weird, but it was time to end this. Still gripping Jin's throat, he dragged Jin off the wall and hurled him across the field. Jin landed near the middle of the arena as his conscious entered his mind. The Jinchuriki arrived in the same sewer but this time, he could already hear QB roaring in anger. When Jin entered the room, he was treated to a terrifying sight. QB was slamming itself at the cage, not caring about its welfare. The cage looked close to buckling under QB's immense pressure. It took a minute for QB to notice Jin standing not far from the cage shaking in fear. Human. I will rip you apart. By now, the QB was already blinded by rage. But all of a sudden, QB froze. It appeared to be deep in thought. It was actually quite terrifying for Jin to see a massive beast suddenly freeze. Human. QB began. You are fighting that impudent whelp outside correct? Jin could only stutter in reply. Why you mean me and Naruto? QB narrowed its eyes. Yes. That mortal who dared defy me. The human called Naruto. I will not repeat this. I shall grant you my power and in return. You will kill him. You shall destroy the pathetic human who defied QB. Jin widened his eyes. Even with his tiny cranium, he could understand the possibilities, the prospects of such a privilege. Oh of course, I will crush that trash like the maggot he is. Kyuubi's eyes lit in amusement. Then go, my vassal. Jin flew back into reality with a massive explosion of demonic chakra. A wave of killing intent swept the entire arena. Even Naruto could not help but freeze for a second or two. Jin rose up dramatically slow. Naruto widened his eyes. I can't let him strike first. Unsealing his Tsurugi Naruto raced forward. With the Kyuubi's chakra out, it wasn't a battle to win now. It was a battle to survive. Meanwhile, the audience all either outright fainted or cringed in fear at the sight of the concentrated demonic chakra surrounding their hero. The Kazekage almost stood up in shock, barely able to control his emotions. Th that's, while Minato seated beside the Kazekage brightened considerably forgetting the previous looks of disdain. Jin on the other hand was feeling ecstatic. The rush demonic chakra gave him was comparable to nothing Jin ever felt. It wasn't as malicious as the last time QB gave him chakra. This. This was amazing. Jin felt stronger than ever. Hell, he felt like he could take over the entire elemental nations if he wanted. The Jinchuriki watched as his brother flew towards him and thought about stopping him. To his gleeful surprise, a claw formed from the chakra cloak reach out towards Naruto. Naruto seeing the chakra claw heading his way, pumped wind and fire chakra into his tsurugi. A bright white flame emerged from the hilt and enveloped T-blade. With a single slice of his sword, a wave white flame flew towards the chakra claw. The two attacks hit and for a few seconds, the two techniques battled it out, each struggling for dominance. But to the blonde's dismay, the chakra claw emerged victorious as it barely tore through the burning wave of fire wind chakra. As the demonic hand reached nearer and nearer, Naruto with all his strength slashed apart the demonic claw and stopped. That attack really took a lot out of him. He wasn't the one with a demon stuck in him and hence have an unlimited amount of chakra. No, he was only human with limits. 
Jin for some reason was still standing in the same spot. The Jinchuriki raised his hands and looked at them, marveling at his own strength. Reaching for a soiled or pill within his pouch, Naruto immediately popped two in his mouth. Even if he wasn't a Jinchuriki, his chakra reserve was still considerably large, at least twice an average Jahnin. Naruto could see his regular attacks wasn't going to work here. He had a limited amount of options. Ninjutsu might work, but from what he have seen, Jin would just overpower any technique he threw. Taijutsu was out of the question. Demonic chakra was extremely deadly to humans, the red cloak would burn his hand even before his attack reached him. Genjutsu might work, but there was no telling how it would affect a Jinchuriki infused with demonic chakra. That left Kenjutsu and Fu and Jutsu. Instantly, a dozen ceiling arrays flew through Naruto's head. Yes, that would work. As Jin stared at his hands, marveling in the extreme surge of power Kyuubi's chakra granted him. Still, Naruto began carefully drawing almost random symbols on his tsurugi. Ceiling arrays. A minute passed, and for some goddamned reason, Jin was still fucking looking at himself. Naruto also finished inscribing his tsurugi with the appropriate ceiling arrays. This is it. Forming a seal, Naruto's tsurugi glowed a light blue hue. He glared at Jin with a fire in his eyes before reappearing in front of him. His sword almost hit Jin before a spike made of the demonic chakra stabbed Naruto in the gut. The crowd gasped. Jin laughed in glee. Before being slashed in the back. Dance of the Crescent Moon, Naruto whispered and the red cloak protecting Jin's back disappeared. The few Uenjutsu drawn onto Naruto's sword was one known as the Impure Banishment Seal. It had a simple purpose. Banishing inhuman influences. It was entirely useless by itself as the seal needed a medium to properly banish the evil, thus Naruto's sword was perfect for the job. Another slash and the cloak diminished in power. Blood quickly flowed down Jin's back as Kyuubi tried desperately to regenerate the missing blood and flesh. It would do no good for the beast to lose its vessel after all. Within its gauge, Kyuubi roared in all its fury. Its pathetic vessel was useless. More. More chakra. And another blast of chakra was sent Jin's way. A wave of demonic chakra flooded the arena and Naruto was blown back habit. A tail formed behind Jin, then another and another. The blonde found himself staring at the Kyuubi's container in awe at the utterly enormous amount of demonic chakra and killing intent. You unbelievable. The audience was getting extremely uneasy. Adults who felt the beast's chakra years ago was either shaking in fear or was getting battle ready, prepared to fight against Kyuubi again. Naruto tightened his jaw and prepared to use the jutsu. The blonde was what most would call a prodigy in all arts known to shinobi, including medical jutsus. After witnessing smaller men take down much stronger and larger opponents, he created a jutsu. Forming a single hand seal, Naruto muttered quietly. Epinephrine limit break. Epinephrine, or more commonly known as adrenaline, a hormone produced during a fight or flight situation. This jutsu increased the production of epinephrine in the adrenal glands for a momentary increase of stamina, strength and speed and in most cases chakra. Immediately Naruto could feel his heart rate increasing. From a steady bum, bum. Bum came a faster bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. His air passages dilating allowing more oxygen to enter his lungs. He had to finish the battle fast or his body might collapse from too much adrenaline. Next, Naruto formed a tiger hand seal Kokwangyo no Jutsu. Bringer of darkness, Jin could instantly feel the effects. The Jinshuriki was definitely losing control over his body. With the increased chakra from the adrenaline rush, Naruto started delivering multiple high-ranked large area of effect Jutsus. A large typhoon surrounded Jin cutting him in multiple places before strong jet of water blasted him off his feet. A wave of fire swept through the arena burning Jin intensely and a spear of lightning pierced through his gut. Naruto panted Abbott but to his dismay the Jinchuriki stood up. The hole in his stomach began regenerating while the cuts and burns was disappearing. Although the red chakra was slowly decreasing as well. Seems like even Kyuubi knew the limits of a human body, especially one as untrained as Jin's. Naruto had to get even more serious now. Putting on a pair of gloves made of steel mesh, Naruto settled into a taijutsu stance, the fire stance of the five elements style. It has been a long time since he needed to use this taijutsu style against someone. Hi no kata, shikami, fire stance, four gods, Naruto dug his heels into the ground. Pushing off against it, and launched forward. While Jin was still recovering from the jutsu attack, Naruto struck first. Byako. White Tiger. Forming two fists, Naruto struck Jin in the chest with both hands. Think Rokugan of Rakushiki from One Piece. The force of the attack blew away the air behind Jin, while the Jinchuriki himself spit out blood. But Naruto wasn't finished yet, this was but one of four attacks in his combo. Siryuo. 
Azure Dragon, ducking beneath Jin, Naruto kicked him in the gut, into the air. Reappearing above Jin, Naruto's axe kick smashed into his brother's back letting Jin fall to the ground in an explosion of dust. Think Tsunade's Tsutenchaku. This isn't over, Naruto shouted, still in mid-air. Gripping his left fist with his right, he let his elbow fall towards Jin on the ground. Ganbu. Black Turtle, with a horrendous sound of flesh hitting flesh, Naruto's elbow dug into Jin's back with the force of a bulldozer. A slight shockwave swept the arena. Think Alex Mercer's elbow airdrop from Prototype. Just one more. Naruto gripped Jin's neck and brought him upright. Suzaku. Vermilion Bird, he merely said and thrust an open palm strike right where Jin's heart should be. Unlike Byako, even Naruto's grip couldn't hold him in place as Jin flew away as if struck by a concentrated Datapa. Jin could feel his ribs breaking, his conscious fading. Every muscle in his being was aching, especially his chest and his back. He could hear Kyuubi growling and shouting but it didn't matter anymore. He just wanted to rest. At last, Jin's consciousness faded away and fell into blissful darkness. He is unconscious, not dead, Naruto could finally grip his knee and rest. The crowd was silent. In shock and awe. For a moment Naruto thought they would start booing about how he cheated. But imagine his surprise when he heard clapping. He looked towards the source and found the entire audience clapping and cheering as hard as he could. The daimyos and other important people had a look that said I want that kid to work for me. Minato looked furious while the Kaze Kage recoiled in surprise. That Janan had defeated a Jinchuriki who was utilizing his demon's chakra, albeit only a fraction, but still. This was definitely food for thought. Naruto looked at the crowd, cheering and clapping. For the first time in Naruto's life, he was being recognized for his accomplishments. Yet, there was only a sense of emptiness inside. Why? The recognition he had always wanted had been given willingly by everyone. Yet why does he feel naught but indifference and apathy? He knew why. Konoha was too late. Naruto returned to the contestants' stand while the crowd was still clapping and cheering. Minato was beyond furious. He would have harassed into that impudent son of his and smack him upside down if not for the important foreign dignitaries watching. Minato was considerably lucky the audience had already forgotten about the torture seal on Naruto. For now, medics moved into the arena and moved Jin out, to the hospital. Not wanting to let the already high excitement die down, Hayate announced the next match. Hoping for another impressive fight, the crowd went silent, on the edge of their seats. The fire daimyo, an underweight decrepit old man, watched with particular fascination. Sabaku no Gara vs Sai. Will the two of you come down to the arena? The Jinshuriki reappeared in the middle with a swirl of sand while Sai shunshined with practiced ease. The proctor, standing between them, eyes darting between them. Both were strong contenders. Gara, especially from what he had seen at the preliminaries, Sai as well, if Donzo taught him. The audience looked in obvious anticipation as Hayate raised his arm and chopped down. Hajime. And he jumped away. Gara started the fight with a wave of sand, headed towards Sai. The emotionless boy countered with a swipe from his brush. Over the months, Sai had developed a special jutsu, similar yet different from his Choju Giga. A string of black ink emerged from his brush, forming a large crescent blade, cutting the wave of sand in half. Sai named this jutsu Inkusakusei, ink creation, jumping through the gap, Sai drew a cross shape in the air. The ink cross formed two crescent blades, soaring towards Gara. A large amount of sand flew from the ground to defend the Jinchuriki which the crossed blades barely grazed it. Sai narrowed his eyes before jumping back, changing his strategy. Even more sand floated out of the ground, forming a hand and flew towards Sai. With a speed unmatched, a large talon was drawn on his scroll. It materialized and clashed with the sand hand. Both struggling for dominancy. While Gar was still slightly distracted from the battle of hand slash talon, Sai quickly drew a whole dragon within a second and pumped a large amount of chakra into it. From the drawing, came a colossal dragon, easily towering over the arena, though not even half the size of a boss summon. A simultaneous gasp was heard throughout the stadium. Snarling and growling, the ink dragon looked almost exactly like an actual dragon, except in black and white. Gara widened his eyes exhilaration killing him would make feel alive. Die. Mother wants your blood, he shouted with a deranged proclamation. As the dragon descended upon Gara, a sudden torrent of sand blasted outwards from the stadium's ground. Immediately the sand wrapped around the dragon. The giant reptile struggled to get out of the vice grip of the sand. Sai saw Gara in deep concentration, his hands doing elaborate motions as two. Three more bursts of sand came from the ground. What the sand-wielding Jinchuriki did not know was that the dragon was merely a decoy. Albeit a decoy that took up more than half of his chakra. 
Sai noticed no sand was protecting Gara, all of it left to combat the giant dragon. Inkusaku say a large ink blade was created from the tip of his brush. Sai sped towards Gara while thinking you were mine. Sai stopped behind the Jinchuriki and swung the ink blade with all his might, only to hear a loud clang. As if he hit metal. Gara turned his head and saw Sai behind him. Cracks appeared on Gara's back. Sai widened his eyes, the sand user clenched one fist and the sand wrapped around the dragon crushed it, leaving ink with dissipated chakra. The sand left the pile of ink and flew towards Sai. Everybody was thinking what just happened? The second part of Gara's perfect defense was his sand armor. A layer of rock-hard sand covered the entirety of Gara's body, protecting him from any attack that managed to get past his wall of sand. For the first time in Sai's life he cursed out loud. Fuck. The sand surrounded him, and wrapped itself around Sai. Kuso. The ink user thought as he struggled against his constraints. Gara licked his lips before clenching his fist once more. A scream resounded throughout the stadium as the sand crushed Sai. A dark liquid dripping down the cocoon of sand. Gara laughed manically before noticing the dark liquid was black. An ink lion bit Gara's torso from behind and shook him around before a sand spike pierced the lion and it dissolved into ink. Sai stood at the other side panting heavily. If I hadn't substituted with an ink clone I hid beforehand, I might really have died. The Jinchuriki growled, a mass of sand rose up aggressively. Sai gulped, he was seriously low on chakra. Two words from Gara was able to send Sai running. Sabaku Q. A large amount of sand flew swiftly towards him. Sai performed several dangerous gymnastics maneuvers to avoid the deadly wave of sand. What Gara did not notice was the pair of scrolls Sai dropped on the floor. With the root shinobi avoiding the sand while moving back at the same time, Gara stepped up his game with a larger avalanche of sand I want your blood. The Jinchuriki screamed with a manic look in his eyes. Gara walked menacingly towards Sai who was now running up the walls to evade the sand. Sai noticed something and smirked. Gara was now right between the set of scrolls he left on the ground. With a single hand seal and a muttered kai, the two scrolls rolled open and a drawing of a dragon could be seen in them. Chojigiga, Sai yelled and all of a sudden two ink dragons tiny compared to the first one, burst out of the scroll, wrapping itself around Gara. What the? Even the stoic Jinchuriki shouted in surprise. Sai panted heavily. He dropped down and landed on his feet as the sand chasing him withdrew. He was extremely close to just fainting right there and then from chakra depletion. Gara's dilated pupil flew from one end to another before laughing insanely. I, I, I wanted to kill you even more now. Ha 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 ha. The layer of sand armor grew foot-long spikes piercing the constricting dragons. Another large mass of sand flew towards Sai, Gar now looking even more crazed. Sai widened his eyes in panic. I give but before he could do anything, a large sand spike ran through him. The spike formed a burly set of tendrils lifting Sai's body, his blood gushing from his wound, three quarters of his torso. Now, the blood was red. The tendril swung his corpse around for a short while before tossing it across the field. Gara for an odd reason, had no interest at all. That was boring. Mother was right, I should not take my kills for granted or I would lose them. His total psychopath killer persona immediately disappeared. The audience gasped loudly at the bloody corpse while some of the children cried. The Kaze Kage pinched the bridge of his nose. Look, Hokage Dono, I'm sorry about my son's behavior. I will take full responsibility for your village's Janan's death. Minato merely waved him off. Don't worry about it. That was some no-name Janan anyways, nobody important. The Kaze Kage raised an eyebrow at the blatant irresponsibility of the Hokage, but shrugged it off, better for him, right? Gara returned to the competitor's stand, disappointed. That Sai did was not able to satisfy mother's bloodlust. Perhaps the first one. Naruto? Yes, he will be enough to feed mother. The Jinchuriki turned and glared at Naruto with a deranged look. The blonde merely stared back in return. Sai. Naruto bitterly though. One of the people I could talk to without having to muse about mutilation. He wasn't a friend in any way, but still it was an insult to me by killing Sai, my teammate. Before the tension could get any thicker between them, the proctor signaled for a cleanup before announcing the next match. A few civilian cleaners went down to clear the bloody corpse and the blood surrounding it with a disgusted look on their face. The proctor seeing the arena clean of the blood, announced the next match third round of the Chunin exam, Aburame Shino against Sabaku no Konkuro. Please come down to the arena. Shino jumped down and the Sunanin did the same. The proctor glanced at the two before swiping his hand downwards Hajime. Konkuro started the match, sprinting towards Shino, fist cocked back. The Aburame settled into a stance and got ready for the puppeteer. 
a punch flew towards the Konoha Shinobi while Shino barely dodged it. Konkuro did not stop there, however, and continued a flow of attacks. He threw a long right hook, but Shino already saw it coming and sidestepped the attack. An opening. The Aburame took advantage of the puppeteer's lack of balance and sent a hard jab towards him. Just as the fist was about to his Konkuro's ribs, Shino sensed something was wrong and jumped back. Two wooden hands was at the place Shino was before. The Aburame traced it back to its source and saw that it came from the bandaged bundle on his opponent's back. Neither said a word as they glared into each other's eye. A trap. My enemy is more strategic than I thought. Both of them decided at the same time that Daijutsu phase was over, now they was going to start being serious. A massive Kikaiku wrapped themselves around Shino hands and acted like weapons while Konkuro released Karasu. Neither wasted any time, already knowing each other's abilities. The Suna Shinobi smirked he probably thinks he knows everything about Karasu. This Aburami will be gravely mistaken when he pays for his mistake. Likewise Shino scanned his opponent's puppet from what I have seen in the preliminaries, my opponent uses a puppet for his fight. And from my research of Kugatsu users, they are generally weak at close range and almost entirely rely on their puppet. Finding the operation mechanics of a shinobi's puppet was quite the challenge but from what I've learned, the joints are the weakness of the puppet. Neither moved, both waiting for the other to attack first and make a mistake. So there are two choices, either I engage the puppet user in melee combat while using my kikaiku to absorb all his chakra. Or I take out his puppet and finish the helpless puppeteer. Calculating percentage of victory. The latter has a higher chance of success. Shino started their second bout, running forward while sending a large swarm of his bugs to the puppet. Konkuro narrowed his eyes and smirked I knew he was going to try that. A twitch of his index finger and a secret compartment on Karasu's left arm opened, launching several kunais at the swarm. It passed through them ineffectively but when it reached the middle of the swarm, the explosion notes tied to the kunai exploded. Not even taking a look at the massive loss he just suffered. Shino continued towards Karasu the Kikaiku cloaking his arms buzzing angrily at the loss of their comrades. The Aburame swung his right arm at the puppet, as if throwing a baseball, and launched an orb of Kikaiku flying towards the wooden contraption. Don't underestimate me, Konohanin, Konkuro shouted and tugged on the chakra strings, making Karasu dodge the ball of Kikaiku and fly at Shino. I got you now, Aburame. Right before Konkuro released the hidden weapon on Karasu, he noticed a black ball heading towards him. Shit. He wasn't aiming at Karasu, but aiming at me. The Suna Shinobi jumped to the right but noticed the black ball followed him. It's a homing projectile huh? Makes sense since those are living insects. Konkuro jumped away again as the Kikaiku continued following him. But he noticed Shino running after his now stationary Karasu. Shino thrust his hand towards the puppet, trying to get his Kikaiku to destroy the puppet. Just as his hand was about to reach the wooden puppet, it quickly moved away. The Aburame glanced at Konkuro who moved his puppet away just in time. That was close. He commented before jumping away again, dodging the ball of insects. Ah, I'm sick of this, Konkuro said as he pulled back another finger, Karasu launching a few exploding kunai at the ball of Kikaiku chasing him which exploded and killed the mass of Kikaiku. Again concentrating on Karasu and it flew towards Shino, hidden blades flying out of the mechanism. Shino bent backwards dodging one and used his hand to perform a handstand before jumping off the ground and avoiding the rest of the blade. Purple liquid fell from the blade and burned the grass, indicating the poisonous nature of the puppet's weapon. A bladed arm came towards Shino, the Aburame barely blocking it with a kunai. Chance. However before Shino could spread his kikai bugs on Karasu, a hidden senbone launcher sent a few dozen poison-coated needles at Shino, forcing him to back off. Meanwhile people in the audience started complaining about the match's dullness. One of the spectators yawned this match is so boring. They should bring back the two other guys. They were entertaining at least. His friend next to him smirked Ryuchi, seems like you don't know much about ninjas. Ryuchi snorted and you are so knowledgeable, Masao? His friend gave an arrogant laugh seems like I will have to educate you. You see, not all shinobi are as flashy as the first two. There are also silent fighters like those two down there. You think they are boring? The truth is, this might be one of the most exciting match from someone else's point of view. Ryuchi next to him gave an incredulous look what? They aren't engaging in a battle of fists, but a battle of mind. I have only a brief understanding of shinobi but from what I can see, the Sunanin is using a puppet to fight. And it is commonly known that a puppet user is not strong physically and relies on his poison wielding puppet to fight. He stroked his chin like an old man, smiling smugly. Ryuchi giggled what's poison going to do to a fast ninja? Masao smiled that's why these puppets are filled with hidden weapons and traps. If a puppeteer's opponent are caught off guard and poisoned, 
they are done for. Ryuchi nodded I see, then our village's shinobi down there can't win? His friend shook his head that's not true. The Oberame are long range fighters as well. From what I can see, our guy can either choose to attack head on or from afar. Either way, if he gets his bugs on the puppeteer, the match is over. Masao nodded as he smiled smugly before widening his eyes and pointed to the match look. A mass of bugs erupted from the ground and attached themselves to Karasu. Konkuro muttered a curse, trying to pull Karasu back, at the same time launching several exploding kunai at the swarm. Explosions took out half of the mass of Kikiyashu, but the other half persisted, eating up the remaining chakra strings connected to the puppet. Forced to abandon Karasu, Konkuro grimaced as the thought of losing flashed across his mind. The Kikai Kun now finished with their meal, returned to Shino, buzzing menacingly around the Aburame. Your puppet has been brought down. Surrender now, or face inevitable defeat. Shino monotonously offered, settling into a loose taijutsu stance. Konkuro looked down for a moment, before lifting his head and smirking. It would do good to learn not to underestimate Asuna Shinobi until you've killed him. He spoke before pulling out two scrolls from behind. Unfurling both scrolls, he shouted I still have an ace up my sleeves, or rather two of them. A plume of smoke indicated the arrival of two new puppets. Resting his two hands on the puppet's shoulders, he cockily announced. The puppet on his left had a humanoid form, with a clawed left arm and was missing a right arm. It had a kanji for left on its chest. Its head was bald and had a glowing red left eye. Both feet were talons instead. The puppet on his right was almost exactly identical to the on his left, however it had a clawed right arm and was missing a left arm while a kanji for right was on its chest. Shino narrowed his eyes, his bugs buzzing became more agitated and excited. So be it. The Aburame simply stated before sending two homing bug balls at the puppeteer. Konkuro's smile faltered a little. Miji right and Hidari left are still incomplete. So they lack most of the hidden mechanisms Karasu had. But without all those hidden weapons weighing them down, they can be fast. Real fast. With a burst of speed, the two puppets flew towards Shino twice as fast as Karasu, passing the two Kikaiku projectiles and completely ignoring them. Miji sent his right claw at Shino, forcing him to duck while Hidari went low and swiped at Shino's feet, making him jump backwards. They did not stop there however, the two puppets carried on with their relentless attacks, forcing Shino back to the wall. Konkuro smirked I have you now. And the two puppets split up, Miji flying towards Shino's left, while Hidari flying towards Shino's right. But just then, Konkuro realized his mistake. By making his two puppets fly in opposite directions, he had given Shino a great opportunity. He had left the middle unguarded. Shino realizing this, grabbed his rare chance and popped a soldier pill in his mouth. His right feet pushed off the wall before he started sprinting towards Konkuro, boosted by the kick. Shino drew a kunai, wrapping his kikaiku in around the blade and ran as fast as he could towards Konkuro, boosting his leg muscles with chakra, knowing he was being chased by the puppets. It took Miji and Hidari a second to turn around and start chasing after Shino, and that second was all he needed to get an overwhelming head start. But they were fast, even faster than the sprinting Aburame, and had almost caught up with Shino before something happened. Shino thrust his kunai towards Konkuro, now only a few feet away from him. It would have stabbed him too if not for him taking a step back, evading the blade by a few inches. Staring at the black blade of the kunai, he gave a sigh of relief before noticing something. The blade extended and landed on his face. The Kikai Kushino had wrapped around his blade before now frantically leached away Konkuro's chakra. Just as Konkuro's chakra was about to run out, he still had enough to send Miji against Shino, the large claw left four long gashes on his back. The poison seeped into his wound. The match was over. Both Konkuro and Shino collapsed at the same time. The proctor hastily announced a tie before ushering medic nins to bring both to the medical bay. The audience gave a slothful applause, while the shinobi in the arena gave a scornful sneer at the audience's lack of appreciation. Naruto nodded at the fight, thoroughly at Shikamaru, he could see him blanch in fright. That made sense though. Shikamaru was supposed to fight the winner between Konkuro and Shino. Now that they are both out of commission, Shikamaru was able to skip it and proceed on to the next round. Now, it will be him versus Sabaku no Gara. Shikamaru with his shadow jutsus and brilliant tactics against Gara and his unstoppable sand. Strategies against a demon, however, would prove to be for naught. Naruto noticed an Anbu sunshine down to the arena, whispering into the proctor's ears. Hayate looked at the him weirdly before nodding and the Anbu disappeared. The blonde was in for an amusing surprise however, when Hayate announced something. There has been a change in the tournament brackets. Due to the unanimous decision between the Hokage, the village council and the judges, 
Namikaze Naruto and Sabaku no Gara's fight has been pushed up. Thus I hereby announce the next round. Namikaze Naruto vs Sabaku no Gara. Naruto raised an eyebrow, watching the scene with an amused expression while Gara nearly split his face in half with his maniacal smile. The audience started murmuring in confusion as Shikamura breathed a sigh of relief before gulping fearfully as he realized he had to fight either Naruto or Gara after their match. The blonde gave a self-satisfied humph. My father wishes me to perish under the Jinchuriki? Then I will prove him wrong by conquering the demon vessel. How he managed to convince the council and the judges after being embarrassed by Jin, I do not know. The two appeared in the arena, both standing calmly although a killing aura radiated from Gara. The proctor looked at both of them and raised his hand before swiping it down quickly and yelling Hajime. I have to finish this quickly Naruto thought as he raced towards Gara, closing half their distance in 10 seconds. Gara's sand leisurely streamed through his gourd, confident he would be able to defend against Naruto. As the blonde ran towards Gara, it looked as if he suddenly stopped and began to fall. Ikazuchi Raid and Kata, form of thunder and lightning god second mode, Shindensen. Purple lightning flash, after a year under Danzo's tutelage. He had managed to almost master the five elements style, but he noticed he was best at two of the stances. Fire and lightning. He mastered both the fire and lightning stance, proving to be an excellent combination. The move he used now was called Shindensen, aptly named as you would soon see. Naruto started to fall, and the audience waited with bated breath, on the edge of their seats. But just as he was an inch from the ground, he suddenly disappeared and reappeared in front of Gar in a split second. The way the technique worked was when Naruto started to fall. The forward speed of the fall due to gravity and using all your physical strength in your legs, the user would gain an incredible acceleration, achieving superhuman speed. Now, he raised his fist at chest level and launched it towards Gara's chest, his arm twisting while in mid-air. He struck Gara's sand armor, sending him flying away. Hi no kata, kusen. Tiger drill. It was a thrusting attack where you focused your body weight and force created from twisting your arm before you hit thereby multiplying the force and wounding power of the thrust several times over. The attack caught Gara by surprise, and saw his armor crack in several places where the blonde struck. He landed safely in a sandy cushion before recovering from the impact. Namikaze Naruto. I will RIP you apart. The Jinchuriki yelled, now no longer complacent and focused his sand onto Naruto. Summoning his Tsurugi, Naruto readied into a stance. Just as a large sand tendril rushed towards him. He placed his left arm up and his right arm holding the sword across his left. Using his sword arm like a whip, he swung his right arm from his left, placing all his weight into the tip of his sword, increasing his destructive power far beyond his normal strength. Kagetsuchi no Kata, Gurensen, form of the fire god, spinning crimson lotus. A single swipe from his tsurugi just demolished Gara's tendril, blasting chunks of hard sand everywhere. Naruto fell forward, and again reappeared in front of Gara, But this time, he was ready for him and just as Naruto was about to perform another Gurensen, the sand closed in around him ready to take him out. The blonde however smirked Kazeo Borokata, Kuzanui, form of the wind void, wind stitch, rotating his body, Naruto slipped behind Gara, dodging his sand attack and slipped into range. There was no time for a proper technique and Naruto just slashed Gara's back, forming large scratch on his sand armor. Gara turned around and almost caught Naruto before he performed another Kazunui and slipped out of the sand's range. It had been a while since he took the soldier pill during Konkuro and Shino's match, he should have replenished enough chakra for an Anjutsu battle. Forming several hand seals, Sutan, Urami aim. Grudge rain, all of a sudden, dark storm clouds covered the once bright sky. Lightning flashed as rain began to fall. Civilians began to wonder where the heavy rain came from, when it was sunny just a moment ago. Naruto gave a faint smile slightly weakened. The technique was a rather high level Sutenjutsu that nearly took half of his chakra see how he didn't have a water affinity. Gara gave a psychopathic smirk, Namikaze. A little water isn't going to do anything to me, he yelled before multiple large sand arms shot through the air, towards Naruto. The blonde narrowed his eyes I guess, it will take a while for it to take effect. Naruto started dodging the sand arms his sword sometimes deflecting those he could not evade. The Jinchuriki suddenly started to notice something. This sand's movement was becoming sluggish. Naruto no longer needed to even try to evade them. A sand arm approached the blonde before he struck it with an open palm, breaking it apart before watching it crumble into sand and mud. The sand nin growled as he suddenly realized his folly. He should have never allowed that damn Namikaze to pull off that Sutenjutsu. The water had seeped into his sand, making it heavier slowing it down and also more fragile. Naruto smirked, and raised his arm. 
Electric danced around his hand. Now the fight truly begins. Electricity danced around Naruto's hand, a cackling sound buried by the constant pattering of the rain. Naruto formed several hand seals Raiden, Yoroi. Lightning release, armor, almost instantly, Naruto wrapped himself in a layer of lightning chakra. Ikazuchi Raiden Kata, form of thunder and lightning god second mode, Shindensen. Purple lightning flash, the blonde leaned forward before reappearing in front of the now manic Ara. However, the Jinchuriki knew he was coming and large amounts of sand converged upon him. But the sand was slow from the water, way too slow to catch Naruto. Regyaku Suihei, lightning apresional horizontal, Naruto thought before performing a single backhand chop against Gara, whose sand armor lost its color and was now a runny mud slowly sliding off of the Jinchuriki. Gara could still control the wet sand however, and the water imbued sand raised up groggily to try to stop Naruto's attack. The blonde's attack was hardly stopped by the sluggish mud and with the sharpness of a fine blade, he cut through the hastily raised mud shield and threatened to slice into Gara's jugular before the ground before him exploded. Caught unaware, Naruto was almost trapped by the sand Gara had hid underground to keep dry. But due to the increased reaction speed Raiden, Yoroi gave, albeit not as fast as the rakage, he was able to perform Kazunui wind stitch, and slipped away from the aggressive sand. Gara gave a self-satisfied smirk while Naruto looked at he ground apprehensively I should have known better than to think he wouldn't have any cards up his sleeve. Smart of him to hide the sand underground to avoid the rain. The blonde smirked as well however but it's still a race against time, soon the rainwater will seep into the ground and the sand will still get wet, the question is, if he can hold me off until that happens. Raiden, Lightning Destruction Naruto charged up a large amount of lightning chakra and forced them into the ground while directing the wave of chakra towards Gara. Normally, it would have cut through the ground towards the target, but due to the rain, the lightning headed towards Gara like electricity through a conductor. Knowing the water's conductivity, Gara created a platform under his feet and levitated the platform of sand and himself to safety. The sand Jinchuriki glared at Naruto, daring him to do something. Gara dared not attack Naruto himself, knowing that except his sand underground, other attacks would be useless. Naruto merely looked at his options and smirked too easy Regen Reikachu. Lightning Illusion Flash Pillar, Naruto shouted while forming several hand signs. An electric light emanated from Naruto's body, forming an extremely bright light, blinding Gara who was glaring at Naruto. Gara closed his eyes immediately and grabbed his eyes in pain, yelling in anger. The simple visual genjutsu were surprisingly useful against the Jinchuriki. Naruto formed several hand seals and widened his mouth Raiden, John False Darkness, and a spear of lightning flew towards Gara. The mistake the San Jinchuriki made was not expecting Naruto to come at him with long-ranged attacks. Being away from the ground, the sand underground could not help him very much. Gara barely opened one eye, revealing it to be bloodshot and its iris was turning yellow while the pupil was morphing into a diamond. Naruto narrowed his eyes at that Shukaku. The spear of lightning continued through the air but was barely dodged by moving the sand platform to the right. However, the lightning spear was not meant to injure Gara. It was meant for Naruto to close the distance between them instantly. Kami Narikawarimi. Thunder substitution. The blonde appeared right beside Gar in midair, a fist pulled back. Hai no kata, kusen dangan. Fire stance, tiger drill bullet, twisting his arm, Naruto launched a spiraling fist-shaped air bullet towards Gara. The air bullet found its mark, burying itself into the Jinchuriki's gut, blasting him off the sand platform. The crowd looked on with awe all commending the blonde on creating a jutsu actually comparable to his father's fame to Russian. Speaking of his father, the audience all of a sudden simultaneously glared at Minato who shrunk in his seat uneasily. While the Kaze Kage widened his eyes, gripping the handles of his chair so hard that it almost broke. Such talent. The floating sand flew to the ground attempting to form a cushion underneath Gara to soften the impact but due to the water weighing it down, was too slow. The Jinchuriki landed on the floor with a large splash and boom. Naruto landed on his feet, panting. As he thought, Kusundangan still needed a bit of work for it to be efficient in battle. It took him twice, no thrice the effort to perform the ranged version of the tiger drill. And the results wasn't even close to what he had expected. Gara got up from the small crater, yellow-colored chakra gathering in the injured spots of his body, already healing him up. The Jinchuriki opened his eyelids, showing his now transformed eyes. The sclera was black while the iris was a yellowish with a golden hue and the pupils were now diamond shaped with four black dots around it. Na, I, Z na, Tagara's whispered. Sending humongous amounts of killer intent at Naruto he shouted Namikaze Naruto. I will kill you. 
the sand hidden in the ground finally appeared in the form of a gigantic tsunami wave headed towards Naruto. The blonde looked in awe at the wave of sand in return I'm getting pretty sick of the same old sand attacks. Time to break this up. Doten, Doryukatsu. Earth release, earth flow divide, Naruto stuck his two hands in the ground and pulled them apart, tearing the earth apart. The ground rumbled a bit before splitting in half, creating a large chasm. The ground now split in two, separated the sand tsunami forming a large space in between, all for Naruto. The blonde gasped for air, shocked at the amount of chakra it took to perform his jutsu. Though he shouldn't have been surprised since earth element wasn't his affinity. Popping another soldier pill in his mouth, he forced chakra into his legs while performing shidensen at the same time, doubling the normal acceleration. His tsurugi appeared in his right hand in a poof of smoke. The blonde closed in on Gara, but he refused to let Naruto get close. The Jinchiriki sent the dry sand towards Naruto, intent on stopping him. The blonde smirked Ikazuchi Raiden Kata, third mode. Narukami. Form of thunder and lightning god, rumbling god, again. He fell forward and using that momentum, he moved diagonally towards Gara. And using the momentum while he fell sideways, he suddenly crossed his legs creating an unbalanced stance. The sudden change of direction and simultaneous instantaneous acceleration, Naruto switched from moving forward to moving sideways. Gar who was confident of stopping Naruto widened his eyes when Naruto suddenly disappeared from his view. That was because the human's eye had a 95 degree field of vision. Naruto who instantaneously moved to the side appeared to have suddenly disappeared from Gara's point of view. Naruto now on the right of Gara, pushed Chakra under his feet, causing a slight explosion of speed. He infused wind and fire chakra into the Tsurugi, bright white flame emerged from hilt, shrouding the sword in its immense heat. Gara noticed Naruto swinging his sword, but it was too late. A flash of white and silver, before a geyser of red filled Gara's vision. Glancing downwards, he saw the torn stump of his now separated arm. Liquid hit his face. It was blood. Now Namikaze's blood, but. It was. His blood. One. Gara screamed. He couldn't help it. The pain was too much. It hurt, more so than the cousin Dangan before, it hurt more than anything else he had ever felt before. His legs stopped working and he fell on his knees. Attempting to cover up the wound, trying to stop the bleeding, only made it hurt more. The crowd winced at the brutality while some of the weaker members of the audience looked away, slightly queasy. Naruto pointed the blade at Gara, expecting a surrender but was not given one as Gara continued screaming. Ignoring the blade pointed at him, Naruto turned away sealing his Tsurugi and deactivating his Raiden, Yoroi. He walked towards the proctor, this match is over. Hayate nodded slightly while grimacing at the blood and gore. Since Sabaku no Gara is unable to continue before he could finish however, he was interrupted by a scream. Namikaze Naruto. How dare you? How dare you? Gara stood up while Yellow Chakra now started infusing into the Jinchuriki. His sand started fusing with his body. Sand now covered the left side of his body. The left side of his face was covered with sand with purple markings, forming a grotesque imitation of Shukaku. His teeth, now fangs, dribbled with drool. Sand also covered his back now while a tail was formed as well. The tail started swinging wildly and his left Shukaku hand's fingers twitched with anticipation. Minato looked at the grotesque miniature Shukaku with hesitation. We have to stop this match, before it gets too out of hand, he said out loud not wanting Naruto to gain recognition for defeating two Jinka Urikis in a row. The Kazekage frowned let them continue, you allowed Jin to continue even after Kyuubi's chakra leaked out right? That was different. Fine, let them carry on then. Minato reluctantly agreed. Kazekage nodded in appreciation thank you, I am curious how Naruto-san will deal with fighting a second Jinchuriki right after defeating Jin. The Ondaime was also slightly interested but was irked when the Kazekage referred to Naruto with an honorific but not Jin despite him being obviously superior to Naruto. Said blonde turned back to face a rapidly transforming Gaara. I will kill you. I will have your blood, Namikaze. His sand arm reached forward and stretched towards Naruto. The blonde jumped backwards, dodging while thinking to himself another transformed Jinchuriki. Damn, if this keeps it up, I'm going to have to call myself Demon Slayer. The rain was still raging however, and the newly formed sand limbs were slowly getting drenched meaning it would start to lose speed, fast. The Shukaku at Gara noticed this as well before growling the rain is getting annoying. With that, he summoned up a large amount of sand before actually covering the outdoor arena with the sand, forming a large dome-like structure. Naruto narrowed his eyes in frustration and reactivated his Raiden, Yoroi. Unsealing his Tsurugi, he started to keep the sand arm at bay while deflecting the sand shuriken sent his way. 
the blonde could feel his stamina slipping away, he knew he couldn't keep up the dodging forever. His chakra was leaving him as well. For the first time since Orochimaru, Naruto truly felt he was going to lose and die. No, Naruto shook his head and pulled his resolve together. I refuse, I utterly refuse to die here before I can achieve my ambition. Before I am the strongest shinobi this world will ever see. With a determined resolve, a fire burned in his eyes for the first time in many years. I refuse. I refuse to die. I refuse to be killed by you, he shouted before forming several hand seals. Boar, dog, bird, monkey, ram. He gathered a large amount of chakra kushio snow jutsu, san shao, ibuse. A large poof of smoke signaled the arrival of a summoned animal. This very action stunned everyone in the audience except for Shikamaru, the Nara was already used to unexpected surprises from Naruto. The significance of such a thing shocked every shinobi to the core. Who hadn't heard of San Shao or no Hanzo, who lived up to his name by summoning one of the strongest summon? Those who had heard Naruto say San Shao was astounded at such a possibility as a Jinan summoning the legendary animal, the Salmonators. The smoke dispersed, revealing a salamander indeed. The amphibian was a dark gray in color and was large enough for Naruto to stand comfortably on. The blonde then put on a respirator that covered the bottom half of his face. He muttered to the salamander below him, his voice now slightly distorted from the mask, Ibuse, poison. The massive amphibian seemed to nod before exhaling a large mist of paralyzing poison. The greenish fog swept past Gara, but seemed to have no effect. Naruto narrowed his eyes I thought that would happen. Because of the demonic chakra, the poison will take much longer to take effect. Gara gave a gruff laugh at the apparent uselessness of the gas before stretching his arm towards Naruto again. The blonde using chakra, held on to Ibuse before muttering dig. The salamander immediately dug a hole in the ground and dived in, concealing itself while moving under the ground at the same time. Gara growled aggressively don't hide, Namikaze. You can run from me, he yelled out before sending sand into the hole. Gara expected Naruto to resurface. But didn't think where. The Jinchuriki felt a slight rumbling before being consumed by Ibuse, who resurfaced underneath the miniature Shukaku. A large roar could be heard from inside Ibuse, and though the salamander was wincing in pain repeatedly from Gara's attacks inside it, it held on, confident its poison would kill whatever it had consumed. Inside Ibuse, Gara was yelling in pain now. The liquefied poison gas was more concentrated than the gaseous version and was affecting the Jinchuriki much more. Soon, he couldn't stand slightly corrosive poison anymore. Gara formed a single hand seal and muttered Tanuki Neri no Jutsu feigning sleep technique. It became silent for a moment in the arena, before Ibuse growled in pain and dismissed itself. The miniature Shukaku appeared in its place, covered in liquid poison, but something seemed different. Roar. Naruto settled into a stance, that didn't sound good. The now possessed Gara began to gather sand, and more sand, and even more sand. The accumulated sand started to fuse with Gara's body, and slowly but surely, the sand demon rose to its original size. Minato widened his eyes, this is bad. Kaze Kage, immediately demand your son to stop. The Kaze Kage saw Gara's released form and chuckled, before becoming a full-blown laughter. Finally, the boy is useful for something. Minato narrowed his eyes what are you implying, Kaze Kage? The user of the gold dust abandoned his cage robes and hat revealing the auburn-haired Kaze Kage donned in full battle uniform. I'm implying, this is the end of Konoha. At that, the ground burst open and Minato flashed back. Two figures appeared from under the ground. One was extremely pale-skinned with waist-length black hair. He had amber eyes with slitted pupils and purple markings around his eyes. He wore plain gray garbs with black pants and a thick purple rope belt tied in a large knot behind his back and blue Tomoe-shaped earrings. The other was an old man with a triangular beard and a mustache with angular corners. He had a big red nose and thick rectangular-shaped eyebrows. The top of his head is completely bald, although, he has some white hair at the back and sides of his head. He wore a green and yellow coat with a red collar. Minato widened his eyes in shock while taking out several Harashin kunais at the same time. He would need them to take on three cage-level shinobi after all, the Ondame Kaze Kage, the snake Sanin Orochimaru, and the Sundame Tsuchike Janaki. At the same time, the arena was shocked by a four loud explosions. The hidden shinobi took the signal and casted a large effect sleeping genjutsu in the arena. Every chunin and above shinobi dispelled the genjutsu as did most of the Jinan, while the all of the civilians lay asleep, unaware of the current chaos and pandemonium around them. Naruto glanced at where the explosions came from and saw a large plume of smoke at the northern gate, he looked around and saw the same for the other three gates. 
He then noticed the disguised enemy Shinobi abandoning their disguises, revealing Shinobi from Otogakure, Tsushigakure as well as Sunagakure. He didn't panic of course, since Donzo sensei had already told him this would happen. He started to head towards Root headquarters to search for Donzo when a large arm slammed into the ground. Naruto peered at the gigantic Santanuki in front of him it would seem that the demon would not let him go easily. Not to imitate Shikamaru but, how troublesome. You are not going anywhere, human. The demonic giant Santanuki yelled out, looking at the tiny human who had dared injured his vessel to such an extent. Naruto glanced at the Baijui with slight apprehension. Taking on the near crazed, Yuki infused Gara was one thing, but facing the actual thing? This might give him a tad of a challenge. Naruto smirked, he liked challenges, however, his chakra reserves was dangerously low, and another soldier pill was the last he could take without endangering his body. Naruto checked his tools pouch, it was still full. One perk about being the leader of Root, was that he had access to equipment of the highest quality. The slight sound of wind parting was the first thing to warn him of an oncoming attack. The angered shout of a Baijuu was the next. I will enjoy killing you, human. Another sand arm flew towards the ground, more specifically, towards Naruto. Infusing chakra towards his calf muscles, quadriceps and hamstrings, he leapt away from the point of collision before being blown away in mid-air by the force of the attack. Shukaku's gigantic fist landed on the ground, a tremor coursing throughout the ground, causing a minor earthquake. The attack did not cease, Shukaku swept his hand towards Naruto. The blonde widened his eyes as he recovered from the force of the previous attack which left him slightly winded. Unsealing his Tsurugi in a flash, he infused wind and fire chakra into the sword. Yet again, a scorching white flame enveloped the blade. Naruto swung his sword, a wave of searing white hot flames tearing into the offending appendage. The sand hand was cut through like a hot knife through butter. The sliced off hand on the ground, and without the yuki, the limb dispersed into a pile of sand. The stump of Shukaku's arm passed by Naruto, but the blonde wasn't one to miss an opportunity like this. Jumping on the hand, he raised up the arm. Naruto reached into his pouch picked out four exploding kunais. He threw them towards the other arm before forming a single hand seal, kunai cage bunshin no jutsu. Mass kunai shadow clone. The original four exploding kunais quickly multiplied into a few dozen. Each one accurately landing on the sand limb. Three, two, one. A series of explosions simultaneously rocked the entire arena, as dozens of exploding tags went off at the same time. Shukaku yelled in frustration as the dozens of explosions blew off his entire right arm, while the tiny human was still running up his left. Actually, the kunai cage Bunshine was only able to clone a regular kunai, but not the exploding tag wrapped around it. But Naruto was able to tweak the jutsu, realizing that with the correct chakra flow, one was able to even clone the exploding tag. But only a ninja who is sufficiently skilled with few and jutsu and is actually able to draw an exploding tag seal blindfolded, would be able to do what he had done. However, a small handicap like a lost arm did not matter to the semi baijuu. It merely directed his yuki into his remaining arm. Naruto was running up and sent sand spikes trying to pierce him. The blonde carefully evaded all the sand spikes, which was quite difficult considering the distractions all around him. Sounds of battle occurring all around the arena where explosions were not at all rare. He only had enough chakra for one more jutsu and he would need that soldier pill after that. Shukaku seeing his spikes not working, finally had enough of the kind of human running up his arm and inhaled a massive amount of air. Naruto widened his eyes as he saw that, knowing exactly what would come next. Futon, Rinkudan, Shukaku yelled as he shot out a highly compressed all of air from its mouth. The expelled ball of air sped towards Naruto threatening to end his life. Once again, Naruto infused chakra into his leg muscles, and jumped up to avoid the menacing air bullet, hoping for the best. The Rinkuden continued its path and smashed into Shukaku's arm, tearing it off at its elbow. Naruto smirked, that took out another complication he would have had to face. Shukaku growled in frustration at losing Ted another one of its limbs. Though the confidence within Naruto soon vanished as he realized he was in midair without any support and hundreds of feet above ground. Oh shit! Naruto thought as he finally started to descend back to earth due to gravity's merciless pull. The blonde looked down fearfully as he started to think of any way to get out of the situation he was in right now. That was when he saw it, his perfect vision granting him a sight more than welcome. The her dot o's. B dot r dot o dot d dot her. Shikamaru was fighting his own battles while Naruto was fighting the giant tanuki thingy. At first he tried to pretend he had already been killed by an enemy by laying on his back, not moving. 
But things got a little too troublesome when enemies started pouring in from the entrances, and the lazy genius decided that to play dead would be more troublesome than to actually fight for his village. So far he had already taken out two of the enemy Jinan and was barely able to surprise an enemy Chunin with his Kajiba. He was about to escape the battle inside the arena and get to his clan compound when a series of explosions went off. Shikamaru squinted his eyes and saw a blonde guy running up the Tanuki's arm while said Tanuki was roaring in anger. Quickly realizing that blonde guy was actually Naruto, he gave a nervous laugh only that troublesome blonde would be daring enough to take on an overgrown Tanuki by himself. Then he saw the Tanuki spit out a ball of compressed air at Naruto and was glad to see the blonde jump out of harm's way, only to begin falling down. The Nara could only give his trademark Mendotus. Before gathering 75% of his chakra and forming several hand seals, Shikamaru looked up at the falling blonde and yelled out Cage Kami no Te. Shadow God's Hand. The her dot O's. B dot R dot O dot D dot her. Naruto looked down and saw a sight more than welcome. Two gigantic black hands erupting from the ground. Shikamaru. That lazy bastard is actually going to save my life. Though secretly, Naruto was actually genuinely happy. He was happy that he had a teammate that was willing to save his life despite being in danger himself. He was happy that maybe, just maybe, Naruto had finally found a friend. The first black appendage caught Naruto, providing a soft landing to ease the impact. The second enormous hand reached past Naruto to grip Shukaku's head. The blonde could see what the Nara was trying to do and not one to disappoint. He popped the final soldier pill and swallowed immediately feeling the previously lost chakra replenishing within seconds. The black hand suddenly dragged Shukaku's upper body down, making it lose its balance. Naruto formed a very familiar hand seal and created two cage bunshine. Here is my chance, my final attack comes now. Tell me if you had seen this coming. The three of them formed hand seals simultaneously. The first cage bunshine finished and yelled Katan, here you Uente. The second cage bunshine finished and yelled Raten. Raryu Kamenaruku. The original Naruto finished and yelled Fuuten, Fuuryu Kazeu. At once, three massive dragons, made out of fire, wind and lightning separately, appeared. Each of them stared at Shukaku threateningly, fire scorching, lightning cackling, wind slicing. The large amount of chakra and light pulled everyone's attention to the three elemental dragons, stopping their fighting for just that moment. The three dragons flew into each other, combining to create a chaotic storm of flames strengthened by wind and bolts of lightning clashing with each other. The S-ranked Annihilation Jutsu flew towards Shukaku who instinctively shielded itself and its host, a legendary by Juu fearing this. Monstrous technique. The firestorm crashed into Shukaku, instantly destroying what defenses it had. The lightning penetrated the Yuki-filled Santanuki, tearing through its body like nothing was there. Even Gara, who was sleeping on the Tanuki's forehead woke up immediately from the intense heat. Fire spiraled around the Baijuu, covering its entirety as blades of wind cut it apart while bolts of lightning destroyed what remained. Everyone stared at the technique, awed and amazed and fearful of the terrifying jutsu, even more fearful of the one who unleashed it. For that one moment, everyone in the arena stopped their battles and fights to stare at the technique utterly destroying the released Baijuu before continuing their battles. It took a while for the fire to settle down and whatever smoke and dust to clear out. All that remained of the tanuki was a large pile of burnt sand and glass. And amongst all that, was a heavily burned, disfigured red-haired boy who was still alive, albeit in an extremely precarious situation. Naruto grinned as pride, relief and exhaustion filled his tired body. The blonde almost collapsed on the shadow hand as it slowly lowered itself to the ground. The shadow hand sunk back into the ground as Shikamaru released the technique opting to take help Naruto out of the battlefield arena. The her dot O's. B dot R dot O dot D dot her. And now for the fight you have all been waiting for. Before Naruto started fighting Shukaku, another battle was occurring somewhere else, an epic clash between the only surviving SS ranked shinobi against three cage level shinobi. Namikaze Minato stared down his three opponents, sizing up his enemies, trying to remember what info he had on them. The first and most noticeable threat was Anaki, the son Daimatsu Chikage of Iwagakur. Known as Anaki of both scales, he was a proud and extremely powerful man with the ability to use the feared dust release. Minato could still remember when he last faced the aged cage, during the Third Shinobi War. Their fight wasn't able to end due to a retreat signal being called for Konoha's Shinobis, but he remembered it being a close fight, though Minato was definitely winning. His second enemy was the Yondame Kaze Kage of Sunagakur. A powerful enemy indeed, with the Kekhe Genkai, magnetic release. From what he had seen war while fighting alongside Sunagakur, the Kaze Kage was able to manipulate Saken, gold sand. 
it was rather terrifying to see a wave of gold sand destroying an enemy camp, and crushing any survivors. His third enemy was the one he was most familiar. Orochimaru of the Sanin, a genius who was said to be on par with himself. A former Jounin who defected after his horrendous experiments which killed many innocent victims was discovered. An extraordinarily powerful shinobi, he is a master of ninjutsu and extremely adept at everything else. Orochimaru laughed Namikaze Minato. After all these years, I finally get to kill you for stealing what was mine. The snake Sanin pulled out his kusanagi from his mouth, the two others standing beside him sending weird looks. Faced with three cage level shinobi, not so arrogant now, Namikaze? Anaki scoffed I don't care whatever grudge you two have, I am here only for the destruction of Kanahagakura and to do that, you must die. The Tsuchikage settled into a loose stance. The Kazekage glared at Minato. Namikaze, I warned you that this would happen. Your arrogance was what forced me to invade your village. Now, prepare to suffer for your mistake. Minato gripped his Hirash and Kunai's tighter, doesn't matter how many of you there are, I will still cut all of you down. Weaklings need to band together after all, to even attempt to challenge a powerful shinobi. The three Kages glared at Minato, not believing that he could even now be so arrogant. Orochimaru growled those arrogant words will be what leads to your downfall. The Kazekage roared in frustration enough talking. It's time to end this. Saken. Sand of gold erupted from the ground in front of the trio, flying towards Minato. The Ondaime Hokage smirked too slow. And threw a Hiraishin kunai away while flashing to where it landed, dodging the wave of sand. However, Orochimaru rushed in next, sword poised to stab Minato. The blonde's extreme reaction speed saved him, and he managed to dodge the stab to launch a Rasengan at Orochimaru's chest. Too easy, he yelled as the Rasengan ball drove into the snake Sanin's torso, tearing it apart. Only for Orochimaru to melt into mud. The snake Sanin attacked from behind, Sinaiashu, he yelled out, sending a dozen small snakes towards Minato's back, from his sleeves. The snakes almost reached the blonde before he flashed away again. You are going to have to try harder to even touch me. Minato mocked. Sabaku Q. The Kazekage whispered as Minato noticed a large amount of gold sand starting to envelop him. This is bad. He thought as he jumped out of the sand's grasp. Only to be punched in the back sending him flying towards the ground. Anaki was floating in the air with his fist covered in rock, smirking. Minato was barely able to recover from the attack before landing on his feet. He was about to counter-attack before being bombarded with jutsus from the Kazekage and Orochimaru. The snake Sanin sent a katan, Goryu no jutsu while the Kazekage sent a futon, Atsugai. The two fire and wind jutsu combined together to create a blast of wide hot flames. The blonde managed to dodge the attack by flashing away again. Jintan, Genkai Hakuri no jutsu, atomic dismantling, a cube with a sphere in the middle rapidly expanded, trapping Minato within its confines. The Hokage tried to break free of the structure but to no avail. The sphere exploded with a tremendous amount of force with Minato still inside, only to reveal. Nothing as Minato flashed behind Anaki, to send a Rasengan towards the old man's back. But he was interrupted by a wave of golden sand. Minato was forced to use his Rasengan to deflect the golden sand before flashing away. The Hokage wiped off a bead of sweat facing these three is harder than I thought. I would have succeeded in landing my attacks if not for the interruptions of the other two. And they are not giving me any time to rest either. He thought as he leapt back to avoid several snakes sent his way by Orochimaru. Not to mention my back is killing me. That punch from the old man was really powerful. Minato winced as the bruise on his back ached. Anaki frowned this is taking too long. Doton, Ganban Q, Bedrock Coffin, three slabs of rock rose around Minato and tried to curse him only for Minato to use a Rasengan to blow apart one of the slabs to escape. I hope they don't know that using the Hiraishin actually takes a lot out of me and I can only use it at a maximum of a dozen times including other jutsus. Minato thought as he ran from the pursuing gold sand. Orochimaru emerged from the ground in front of him sending several large snakes at him while slashing with Kusanagi. It took Minato all he had to avoid the poisonous snakes and deadly sword and was able to send a kick at Orochimaru through an opening. But to his surprise, it wasn't a clone. Orochimaru smirked and grabbed Minato's leg, disabling his movement. Now, this signaled both Anaki and the Kaze Kage to send their strongest attacks at Minato. Saken, Kaze Kage yelled, sending a wave of golden sand at Minato. Doten, Doryudango. The Tsuchikage yelled, lifting up a gigantic clump of earth easily with one hand while the, the other formed a half torus seal. He spewed fire chakra into the lump of earth, setting it on fire. Minato glanced back and gulped that's not good. 
before turning back and gripped Orochimaru's hand, trying to peel it off. The snake Sanin was unrelenting and even tightened his grip. The blonde took out a kunai and tried stabbing him, but was unsuccessful as Orochimaru covered his arm in chakra, giving it a steel-like hardness. Anaki threw the massive rock at him while the gold sand flew towards Minato. Seeing no other choice, he formed another Rasengan and tried to smash it into Orochimaru's arm only to be stopped by his tongue, wrapped around Minato's wrist. But he could form another one and he hit Orochimaru's left arm right in the elbow, blowing it off and loosening his grip. Minato flashed away instantly leaving Orochimaru alone to face the two attacks. The snake Sanin was able to escape, but barely unscathed. Chunks of rock smashed into him while being blown away from the force of the impact. Orochimaru hissed angrily before smirking. Snakes came out of his elbow and regenerating another new limb. Anaki turned to Orochimaru can't you hold him properly, snake. Orochimaru sneered at him maybe if you had been faster with your attack, he would be dead by now. The Kaze Kage tired of their argument decided to end it both of you shut up and focus your anger onto him. They all turned towards me Nato looked at Orochimaru and smirked. Instantly, he disappeared and reappeared in a yellow flash next to the snake Sanin, before blowing him away with the Rasengan. Orochimaru landed in a heap clutching his wounded side, how? When did you manage to apply one of your seals on me? Minato flashed away again humph, remember when I kicked you? That was when I marked you. Now, I can teleport next to you anytime I want. Orochimaru immediately lost his in pain face and laughed. You idiot, telling me that. If you marked me, I can just do this, right? At first, nothing happened, before Orochimaru unhinged his jaw and opened up his mouth. Black hair came out of his mouth, then an entire body leaving the shed skin with the Horatian mark. Orochimaru shed his skin to get rid of the Horatian seal. Minato grimaced that was gross. The snake Sanin smirked thank you. Now we know not to get physically touched by you. Anaki scoffed easier said than done, snake. Namikaze is fast, with or without his Horatian. The Kaze Kage who had been in concentration smirked. The ground around Minato rumbled before the ground around him exploded and large amount of golden sand flew out, instantly encasing Minato within. Quickly, he willed the sand to crush Minato, but to no avail as he had already teleported out, next to the shedded skin Orochimaru was still standing next to. I will get rid of you first, Rasengan, he yelled as he tried to drive the rotating ball towards Orochimaru. Again, he was interrupted as a dragon made of rock flew towards him. Doten, Dosikiryu, Earth and Stone Dragon, Anaki muttered as he sent it flying towards Minato, knowing he would try to attack Orochimaru again. The attack was too quick for Minato to avoid and the dragon swallowed the blonde. Only for its neck to explode a second later as the Hokage blew a hole in it with his Rasengan and jumped out. He was again forced to jump away as pellets of golden sand flew at him. When he landed, he raced towards the Kaze Kage who he thought would be helpless. Only to be forced to change direction as a wall of gold sand appeared in front of him, and threatened to swallow him up. Now, he was speeding towards Anaki who was floating in mid-air. Throwing several Hirashi kunai at him, Minato planned to flash to one of them before Anaki deflected them with a small futon jutsu. Still running towards Anaki, Minato jumped with chakra enhancements and prepared to smash a Rasengan into Anaki's small frame. He almost succeeded if not for the flying Kusanagi aimed at him. Minato, in midair, was not able to avoid the flying sword until he flashed away. Minato was now uncertain if he could even take out one of them. Every time he tried to attack one of them he would be interrupted by another and would lose that rare opportunity. Most of the time he would be trying to avoid attacks sent by all three of them. He considered flashing away to another spot to recover before returning to battle until he saw someone that changed his mind. Orochimaru sensed a disturbance in the force, couldn't help it, lol, and looked up, only to see a large thing dropping down on him. The snake Sanin left away to find a large dode landing where he was standing before. Say 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 say. Densetsu no Sanin, Jiraiya has arrived. The white-haired Dode Senen gave an awkward dance on his battle toad before posing in a supposedly threatening stance. Orochimaru frowned looks like we have an interference. Jiraiya's toad jumped next to Minato and he formed a battle stance before turning to him, whispering Minato, the north and east gate has been broken through, large snake summons as well as crazy amounts of Iwa, Otto and Suna Shinobi has flooded into the village. The west gate is holding their own while the south gate has pushed the enemy back. Our casualties are severe, said blonde grimaced what are you doing here? Get back on the front lines, I can handle these guys. Jiraiya shook his head you know you can't deal with them by yourself. Don't worry about the gates, Sarutobi Sensei is rushing from the south gate to the north gate right now, along with many of his elite on Bugards. 
I'm here to help he was interrupted by a wave of golden sand. Stop whispering amongst yourselves, stop wasting our time and just roll over and die, Anaki yelled before forming several hand seals. Dot and Doryu Dan, Earth Dragon Bullet, a dragon like head emerged from the ground and fired dense chunks of rock at them. They dodged it only to have a large snake fly at them, jaw agape, ready to swallow them both alive. Jiraiya gave an annoyed look before spinning on one arm and kicking the snake away. Orochimaru, I have dealt with your snakes so many times, I can take them out without even trying. The snake Sani narrowed his eyes in slight anger. Jiraiya turned towards me not a while will separate Orochimaru from the others, you'll have to hold on your own with the other two until I get back. The blonde nodded in the affirmative. The white-haired sen informed several hand seals don't endure Yukatsu. Earth flow divide, and slammed his hands into the ground. A rumble occurred before the ground split into two between Orochimaru and the two cages, tearing the earth apart, creating large chasms, separating them. Jiraiya leapt towards Orochimaru, wishing Minato good luck. With Orochimaru taken out of the equation, Minato would have a much easier time with only the 2s ranked shinobis left. The blonde turned towards his Jiraiya Hey Sensei, let's have a race and see who defeats their opponents faster and go helps the other. The white-haired Senen turned back and smirked I will be here helping you before you know it, kid. Anaki and the Kaze Kage was slightly put off by their proclamation. The Tosuchikage flew up deciding to be serious now. Why was he so worried about collateral damage anyways? He put his palms together before motioning to the Kaze Kage to keep Minato busy. He nodded in understanding and sent his golden sand after Minato again. The blonde looked at Anaki concentrating and knew something big was coming. After dodging a few sand spikes, he threw a Hiroshin kunai at Anaki. The Tosuchikage floated to the right and evaded it, only for Minato to teleport next to him, a Rasengan in hand. Anaki frowned and broke his concentration to dodge Minato's attack. The Tosuchikage was ready to counterattack but saw a golden hand grip onto Minato's leg. The Hokage looked down and cursed, pulling away from its grip. He flashed away and glared at the Kaze Kage for interrupting. A large amount of gold sand appeared from seemingly nowhere, hovering in midair, blocking Minato's view of Anaki. The Kaze Kage finally decided to get physical and rushed towards Minato. The blonde saw the Kaze Kage and decided to humor him by engaging him in Taijutsu. The two exchanged a few blows, a kick here and a punch there. Minato with his furious mix of jabs and deadly high kicks while the Kaze Kage, with a larger body frame, grappled and tossed. A few moments passed while the two tried their hardest to disable the other before Anaki yelled out I'm ready, get behind me. The Kaze Kage smirked and leapt behind him, shedding the sand armor he had on along with the Hiroshin seals Minato had probably marked him with. The hovering sand moved away revealing Anaki with a conical structure within his hands and a sphere within it. Minato was about to move away but sand gripped his feet, trapping him to the ground. Anaki noticed the sand gripping Minato's feet and smirked, he ain't escaping this one now. Jinten, Genkai Hakuri no Jutsu, he yelled as the sphere glowed and exploded with enormous power, the force directed in a conical shape towards Minato. The blonde looked at the incoming attack and clenched his teeth think, 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 think. That's it. Minato formed several hand seals and bit his thumb. Kushios no Jutsu. Hogoshin no Gama, Guardian Toad, a poof of smoke appeared at the same time as the explosion colliding with Minato. The smoke and dust dispersed, revealing a large armor-clad toad who looked terrible, with broken armor pieces, bruises and cuts. Although Minato looked unscathed hiding behind it. Arigato, Gama-san the toad nodded weakly before being dismissed. Infusing chakra into his feet, he tore them out of the golden sand and looked furious. The area around him was utterly destroyed except for the patch of concrete he was standing on. It's my turn now. The her dot o's. B dot r dot o dot d dot her. Jirai let Orochimaru away from Minato's fight in order to not let him join back into their fight as easily. Orochimaru. What happened to you? Attacking your own village? Can you get any lower than that? Trying to destroy the place that you grew up in, the place that raised you. The Senen yelled out, furious that his ex-teammate would actually do such a thing. Orochimaru glared at him with fury unhidden shut up Jiraiya. You don't know anything about me. Not now, not all those years ago. The Senen growled oh I do. Trust me, I understand you. And I've come to realize, after all these years, you aren't plagued with emotional issues, nor are you troubled. Orochimaru. You are just sick in the head aren't you? You are just a sociopath who derives in causing pain, aren't you? All those years, we spent trying to fix something that was already broken. You. Orochimaru. Jiraiya yelled pulling back his fist and socking the snake Sanin in the face, launching him away. Orochimaru pulled himself up, chuckling before erupting into full-blown manic laughter. 
Still the fool aren't you, Jiraiya? I'm not a sociopath. I'm a genius. I'm not crazy. In fact, I'm the only one who's still sane in this psychotic world. I, who will learn the secrets of life and death and become a god. And you, still the same jester as when we were Janan, still the same foolish, childish boy. Jiraiya. Orochimaru ran towards Jiraiya, pulling his arm back and socked Jiraiya in the face back, launching him backwards. The toad Sanin recovered in midair, landing on his feet. Jiraiya wiped off the slight tinge of blood from his lips and leveled his glare at Orochimaru. The Senin clenched his fist, Orochimaru, let's end this, once and for all. The snake Sanin, seemingly out of character smiled that's fine by me, Jiraiya. I look forward to beating you down like I've always done. The two ran towards each other, fist cocked back and drove their fist right into each other's faces. Orochimaru acted fast, a kick already sent towards Jiraiya before the white-haired Sanin landed another blow onto Orochimaru's left rib. They jumped back, away from each other before gathering their chakra. Orochimaru quickly formed several hand seals futon, Daitapa. And a large gust of wind blew towards Jiraiya. Said Senin formed hand seals of his own, Katan, Ryuka. Spewing out a large wave of flames, tearing through Orochimaru's wave of wind, headed towards the snake Sanin strengthened by the wind. Orochimaru responded by forming hand seals Dota and Doryuaki. A large wall of earth rose up in front of him, shielding him from the wave of scorching fire. Orochimaru drew his kusanagi and ran up the rock wall. Reaching the top, he looked down and saw Jiraiya looking at him. The snake Sanin jumped from the top of the wall, raising Kusanagi above his head, ready to strike him down. Jiraiya replied with the Elhari Jizo encasing himself with his hardened and lengthened hair, in a cocoon of needles and spikes. Kusanagi struck the hardened hair, not even leaving a scratch. Orochimaru was forced to jump back as the needles lengthened and threatened to pierce him. The hair shortened and returned to its original shape, revealing an indifferent Jiraiya the one whom his enemies last see before they die. The one that appears when Jiraiya switches off his emotions. He started forming several hand seals and Orochimaru recognizing them started doing the same. They both ended at the same time and bit their thumbs. Kushios no Jutsu. They both yelled at the same time and two equally large clouds of smoke appeared. The smoke dispersed, revealing a gigantic red toad, wearing a jacket and smoking from a pipe. And a massive violet snake coiled up. The two looked at each other and immediately knew what was going on. Their summoner could only be facing one person if they are seeing each other. Orochimaru. Summoning me to fight your battles again. I see. The massive snake spoke, hissing menacingly. Orochimaru replied yes, Mandasama. Now that Jiraiya has summoned the toad, I will require your assistance in battle. Manda licked the air fine. But once we are done, I will require a hundred human sacrifices. The toad glared at the snake in front of him. Jiraiya. Looks like we are taking on Orochimaru again. Huh? The white-haired Sena nodded yes, Bunta. This will be the last time, because I'm going to defeat him, right here, right now. Game Abunta exhaled a trail of smoke fine, but remember that's what you said the last time too. Humph, if Katsuyu was here, it would be just like old times, huh? Manda started things off by launching itself towards Bunta, ready to sink its fangs into the toad. The frog boss blocked the attack with his gigantic tanto, and pushed Manda back. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes and shouted Bunta. I need some oil. The white-haired Sen informed some hand seals as Game Abunda shot out a jet of oil. Katan, Gamma Uendan. Toad oil flame bullet, Jiraiya shouted as he blew out a stream of fire at the jet of oil, igniting it, creating a large flamethrower-like wave of fire. The fire enveloped Manda and Orochimaru, causing it to apparently hiss in agony. But they weren't tricked, they knew it wasn't over yet. The flames dispersed, revealing Manda's shed skin. The ground burst open as something purple erupted out of it. Game Abunta sliced at it, only to notice it was only Manda's tail. The ground behind Bunda burst open and this time, Manda's head flew out ready to bite Bunda behind his back. However, Jiraiya already knew that would happen and had already formed hand seals in preparation. Katan Zukaku. Searing migraine, he shot out a small fireball that flew towards Manda before erupting into a giant firestorm upon touching the snake. Manda truly hissed in agony this time as he dived away in pain, trying to shake off the flames. Orochimaru put them out with a water jutsu, relieving him of the pain. Manda glared at Jiraiya I'm going to enjoy eating you. The Senin did not reply and merely stared back coldly. The her dot o's. B dot r dot o dot d dot her. Minato took a stance and closed his eyes in concentration, he snapped them open as a burst of chakra come from within. Kaimon, Kai. Gate of opening, a fury of chakra enveloped Minato, giving him a blue outline. 
the blue-eyed Hokage smirked, it's time for payback now. He threw a dozen Harashin kunai at them, flashing in between each one. The Kazekage tried defending with his golden sand, only for Minato to suddenly disappear and reappear at another location, before flashing away again and reappearing at another area. Anaki and the Kazekage looked around as yellow flashes occurred all around them. Minato smirked this is why I'm called the yellow flash of Konoha. Rasengan. Out of nowhere, the Hokage appeared behind the Kazekage and landed a successful Rasengan at his back. The Kazekage grinded his teeth in pain, but his sand armor protected him. But not for long as Minato landed another Rasengan at the same spot, grinding away the golden sand armor, the force of the technique pushed him into the air. The Kazekage flew up, spitting up some blood as he gradually fell down, being caught by his golden sand. Minato was given no time to rest as Anaki came in from the side, a fist cocked back, encased in rock. The blonde defended himself with his left arm, only for it to immediately break from the power of the attack. A combination of Doten, Kengen, Fist Rock and Doten, Chokoyugan, ultra-added weight rock, drastically increasing the weight of Anaki's attack. Minato was launched away, crying in pain while cradling his broken left arm. He recovered in mid-air, and landed on his feet. Minato glanced at his left arm, a dark bruise already forming over the broken arm. This is bad. I can't fight anymore with this arm, leaving me with only one arm to fend off the both of them. But I can take out the Kazekage soon. Anaki is what I'm afraid of. He has barely received any damage at all throughout this fight, and from what I hear, his chakra stores are massive, so a fight of stamina is out of the question. The Kazekage had already recovered from the double Rasengan and was wincing in pain as he pulled himself up. He was already tired of this ninjutsu battle, and decided to engage Minato in a physical battle again. The Kazekage formed a golden sword from his sand, a broadsword half the size of Minato. He covered himself in sand armor and once again rushed towards Minato. The blonde found himself in a sword fight, while holding onto a kunai. So this was why the Kazekage was also known as the Golden Knight of Suna. His skills with a broadsword was indeed terrifying, as each slash and stab came closer to beheading Minato. Minato could think of one thing while dodging and parrying the sword strikes. This is going to suck. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.